folks, time for another video and shave. All right, so I'm a little, 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 little bit excited today. Um, I'm, I was actually going to wait another day for my shave because I'd like to really have at least two full days of growth for my video, but I only have about one and a half just because um, in my last video, um, you've seen me shave with a product by Red Leaf. It's actually Red Leaf Bath and Body is their full name, but on the soap it says Red Leaf. But they make a ton of great products. And I have to apologize to Chris. For some reason, I kept on calling him Eric. He's the proprietor of that establishment, of that soap business. Well, here's what happened. So I shaved with the beach, which was a great aquatic scent. The performance was great. It's in this nice little 3.5 cube. Um, does have glycerin in it, but uh, coconut oil is its base. Um, I'll throw up the ingredients right now. And you can look at the ingredients there. Now, the reason why I'm shaving a little bit early this time is because I can't wait. Because what happened was when I opened up the other soap I bought, which is called Pipe Tobacco. And of course the soap isn't in here because it's already out. The soap is right here. It's the same exact kind of cube. Looks like a glycerin cube, but it does have glycerin in it, but it also... Its main base, I believe, um, according to their website, is uh, coconut oil. Well, here's the deal with this soap. When I took it out of the container, when I shaved with the other soap the other day, my mind went, <laughs> because the scent brought me right back to being eight or nine to, or ten years old. And, like, in an instant, like, all of a sudden, everything, like, went blank, and I went back to being a child. And this is going to be a quick history deal. So I already lathered up this soap because I didn't want to waste the time on the lathering. It lathers just like the, uh, the beach did, the other soap. Um, great lather, but I'll get into that in a minute. The, uh, here's the little history for me. So I grew up here in New Jersey, but uh, my parents had a vacation home in the Pocono Mountains of uh, Pennsylvania. Um, so we're here in New Jersey, but we had a vacationing home up in the Pocono Mountains. Now, primarily it was used in the 60s and 70s and 80s. Um, we used it more in the winter time because um, we were big skiers. And uh, where we were located was like in between Camelback Mountain and Jack Frost Mountain in Poconos. Now back then, it was pretty much rural up there. There was nothing really around. The nearest store was like 15 miles away and it isn't like it is up there today. Um, and we have an awesome little you know cabin out in the woods basically by lake so that's why i fell in love with bass, fi bass fishing but i've spent pretty much all my summers up there as a kid um the whole summer all the whole entire summer never really came back to new jersey me and my mom would stay there when my dad would kind of go to work and then come back up at whatever the case may be. We, i spent the whole entire summers up there had my first job up there um in the wintertime i was a ski instructor um so yeah it was a great place to grow up um, and we came back to New Jersey, which was our main residence. Well, when it did rain up there, we went to a local town, which was about 15 minutes away. It was a small town back then. It was called Mount Pocono. And in Mount Pocono, um, it was a little touristy, but it was the only place to see a movie. So if it rained, then we went into Mount Pocono, um, to see a movie. It was a little tiny movie theater. I think it was called the Casino Movie Theater. It was a real small theater. I think it only fit maybe about 50 or 60 people. They had an ice cream, an old-fashioned ice cream parlor right there. It was great. And across the street were a couple older stores. Um, and one of them was like called the Ye Old Trading Post. And it was like an American Indian outpost. And they had, they had cowboy stuff. And so, when, you know, in the 70s when you're a kid, that's when I was a younger kid in the 70s, uh, you know, Cowboys and Indians were the thing, and I'll never forget walking in there, and the first thing that hit me was a scent. And this was the scent. This red leaf pipe tobacco, which on his website, it says it's a, it's an awesome tobacco scent. Not the smoke, but the nice tobacco. When you open up a nice uh, package of tobacco leaf, like that. Um, but what I get out of it is a 
tobacco with honey. That wasn't described, but that's what my nose is picking up. And it right away took me back to this place. Now, I'm gonna, now I, I didn't even know if these places exist anymore because this was back in the 70s, the like mid to, you know, around 77. So I went to Google Maps and the store is still there. So I'm going to pop that up now. Boom. And uh, yeah, that was my childhood walking in there and looking through all the bins of like the the little cap guns and all this little like, you know, Western kind of stuff. It was so cool. And there was a bunch of Amish stuff in there. Like the little like, they weren't candy canes, but they were like uh, swirled candy sticks with different scents. But the store had this scent and the, this pipe tobacco scent from uh, uh, Red Leaf. Uh, just taking me back. That's what I'm just kind of like a little nostalgic. I'm going to do my shave a little early because I'm excited about it. And yeah, so, uh, I mean, out of the, you know, 200 plus artisan soaps I have, I just came across this soap that's, you know, $10 from Red Leaf. And man, it took me back. It's still taking me back just by smelling it. Now, I did already whip it up in the, in the, in my sash ball. I left it a little bit dry just because I'm going to wet the face. I guess it's, I don't have a ton of growth, but I do have a day and change on there. So, yeah, I'm glad I found that uh, Etsy shop by the old Lancaster towel. If I wasn't dealing with this towel, I wouldn't have found the red leaf part of Etsy there. All right, so I'm going to just take this uh, cube of pipe tobacco, use it as a pre-shave, like I did when I used the other soap, which was called Beach. I don't think it was called The Beach. I think it's just called Beach. Don't want to confuse it with anybody else's at the beach because I know there's other artisans with that name. So, and it fits great. If you own a cube dock from Phoenix Artisan Accoutrements, this cube fits on the cube dock perfectly. And it's easy to scrape. Whoops. It is slick. It is easy to scrape off of that cube. And put it in a ball if that's your deal. So. It's a nice slick soap. And the brush that I whipped that up today in my sash ball. Was my Schmoog. My Schmoog. 12.50 I believe. And right here, I'm just going to use the Rockwell 6S today. And I'm going to use that Astra Superior stainless that I used the other day on second use on plate number five. So I'm on plate number five there. And let's get to this awesome scent that brings me back to my childhood. Now, I'm sorry, Chris, that I called you Eric. <laughs> I was just so brain farted on my last video i had audio problems in editing because my washer and dryer were going in the background i was trying to tone that down without killing my audio so i was having all kind of upload problems to youtube so sorry about that but i did pop up there your correct name chris from red leaf Bath and Body Products in Seattle. Eventually, I will get his bomb because he does make a aftershave bomb that looks like it has tons of goodies in it. Oh, I had somebody, I had somebody jump ship over here. <laughs> the soap is slick. Just to let you know. And like I said, I just used the, the cube. You could just rub that on, on your face all by itself. And just lather it that way. I just like the bowl lather to get the... To get the bowl lathering effect. And like I said, it was easy to scrape off of the, the cube. Not like it's super soft, but it's scrapable, no problem. That's good stuff in there. <laughs> Wish you guys could smell this. 
because I love tobacco scents and it's not the tobacco scent that really set me off here loving this scent it was that my brain just clicked in right to my childhood of all those summers up in the Pocono Mountains and what was cool about Mount Pocono is it was so close to another little place called Memory Town where they used to have these little paddle boats these paddle paddle boats it was kind of a touristy place but it was a cool little place they had like a nice little like big uh like hall where there was a bar for the adults and the kids felt a little bit more grown up because they get to sit there in this big kind of beer hall kind of reminiscent of like a uh Pennsylvania Dutch beer hall and if you guys remember back in the 70s all those television commercials for all the honeymoon resorts up in the Poconos especially Mount Airy Lodge which now is like a, they rebuilt it and it's now a casino but as a young kid in the summer up there what we would do is, if we wanted to go ice skating or go to these big arcades, we would just go to the resorts like Mount Airy Lodge. There was Penn Hills. There was a whole handful of them, of like honeymoon places. And then when I was in high school, I used to work up there in the summer. I was, you know, electronics kind of guy, so there weren't many electronics stores up there, that's for sure. But I worked at the movie theater up there for years. Didn't make a lot of money, but met a lot of good people. And since pretty much it was a vacation spot, you know, people that I met were pretty much from, you know, the New York metropolitan area. So I stayed in touch with them all these years. It was a great place to uh, spend the summers. I really thank my parents for uh, having that place up there. In fact, they sold it not too long ago. Just because it was, uh, we really weren't going out there anymore just because I was doing a lot of bass fishing on the bass circuit, so I wasn't around. And my parents bought their condo in Florida, so. Plus they also have a house down the Jersey Shore, so. And you can see that the residual slickness is good on the soap because I'm shaving just with the residual right now. And you can hear that feedback. But I do have plenty of soap in the bowl, so why not use it, right, Glenn? Slickness is really good on the soap. I'm not saying this is the super soap of the year, but it's a good soap, and it's very affordable. 3.5 ounces in that cube. And I bought it off of Etsy, so it was $10.50. If you actually buy it off of the Red Leaf website, I believe it's $9, if, I, if I'm correct. So if you check out the last video, which that link should already be kind of popping up here in the corner. That info link. I don't know how you watch your YouTube videos, but... I know if you watch it in a landscape mode or on a computer, that link does pop up up top there in the corner. So, I hope I don't have as much trouble getting this video up on YouTube as I did yesterday. But that was more of my computer slash editing software that was screwing up. I was up all night dealing with that. But yeah, so... As soon as, you know, I, I opened the soap after that last shave and I was just like, whoa. I actually opened it before, 
But when I actually opened it and scoped it out, it, my brain went blank. I mean, it went physically blank. And like right back to my childhood. Like I was standing in the middle of this. Like old cowboy, Indian and cowboy store, which, God, those days. I remember they used to sell like the, the bow and arrows, the fake, you know, for the kids to play with like bow and arrows. Back when I was, because I thought that was like awesome. Because, you know, we used to love to play, you know, army and cowboys and Indians. And they had the, all the cowboy and Indian stuff there. They had like cap guns and I remember they had like the 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 uh, arrows with the fake rubber tips on them. <laughs> and they had the authentic like taffy from the Pennsylvania Dutch. And they had those twirled candy sticks with all the different flavors and then across the street was an old-fashioned soda fountain uh, it was also an ice cream parlor but they had an old-fashioned soda fountain there with a soda jerk working there and you can get old-fashioned ice cream sodas and shakes and whatnot that was a weird move <laughs> Actually, shaved off some hair up there. Duh, that's because I'm so digging this scent. So thank you, Chris, for uh, coming up with this deal. It totally, I mean, I can't believe. I mean, that's how my mind works anyway with scents. That's why I'm bad sometimes with, you know, explaining scents. Especially if somebody sends me some kind of like cologne kind of scent and I can't put a finger on it. Because I always, you know, for scents for me, I always kind of go back to my childhood and be like, like, oh yeah, I smelled this before, you know, and it smells like, it smells like this, you know. So I just had to tell my story. I can't believe the place is still, I haven't been up there in, I think 1996 was the last time I was up there because that's the last time my parents had the house. But wow. And so much has happened since then. I know looking from the satellite photos and the, you know, it's pretty, I don't want to say industrialized up there now, but it looks like, you know, it's very urbanized. It wasn't like we lived out in the woods and there was like nobody near us for miles. There was no street lamps. You know, our water came from a well, not the old well where you had a, with the bucket, but an underground well. You know, we were on a septic tank source system. Like I said, there was no street lamps. The roads were all dirt. And in the summertime, they would put a coating of, like, tar on the dirt road so the uh, dust didn't kick up. How we got around up there is, you know, my parents used, when I was younger, my parents used to just drive the car in. And then we had, um, we had mini bikes and we also had, uh, quads and trikes back in the 70s but we had mini bikes and stuff and winter time we lived on our snowmobiles that's how we got to the ski slopes that's how we got to we went out to, there was a couple good restaurants out in the middle of the woods there that aren't there anymore but yeah that's how we used to get around up there it was great childhood memories and i thank my parents for making that all happen for me when i was a child Lots of fun. Used to love to play in the woods when I was a kid. All the streams and you know, it was just like a Huck Finn of a Huck Finn adventure from Tom Sawyer. Alright, I'm gonna drain the old sea monster sink. And I am nice and smooth. I got a hair here somewhere. I think that came from this other towel. Alright, I'm just gonna do a quick cold water rinse. Now I am really BBS because 
I'm kind of a day early with my shave, but hey. That soap triggered so many childhood memories. I just had to keep a, I had to go with it before I, before I lost that. Memories. Right, I'm just gonna, still got a little bit of slickness there. The soap does have great slickness. Grab the old Lancaster towel there. Hey, if it wasn't for this towel, I mean, I'm on Etsy a lot, but not like every day. I have a couple artisans that I buy stuff from on there, but when I was waiting for this towel to drop, you know, Etsy recommended a few places, you know, shave related. And Red Leaf Bath and Body was one of the places. And I, when I saw these cubes, I was like, that's a cool idea. And like I said, I think there's 13 or 14 different scents. I do want to try that low octane or high, high octane one. That sounds interesting. All right, so sorry to go on and on about the story. I know I'm probably running a million miles here. I don't want it to be super duper long. So anyway, that was Red Leaf Pipe Tobacco. Available from Etsy or from their website, which I will, put, of course, I'll put the links down below. And that was the Smog 1250 brush. And I still got a decent amount there in the bowl. And you can see that, that soap is awesome. And look how smooth and slick it is. You know me, I'm playing with my ladder. And I still have, like I said, I still have a decent amount in the bowl. The sash ball right there. You can see it's nice peaky lather in there. All right, so oh, my hair got all jumble eyed. Yeah, I hopped in the shower and I was like, you know what? I want to shave with this pipe tobacco today because I want to be taken back to my childhood. All right, I don't have the matching bomb for this, but I got something that'll be perfect with this. I have Lothario from Zingari Men, which is their tobacco with a little bit of bay, leaf, and bergamot. And this will be a good match, because anytime I do a tobacco scented soap that I don't have a matching splash or bomb, I go for the Lothario. And I'm sorry, Chris, I didn't pick up your bomb. If I would have known, if I would have searched around a little bit longer on your Etsy page and saw you had that two soap Two soap uh, cubes and a bomb package there, that gift set or whatever it was called. And it was only, I think, $25 or $24 or something like that. I would have did that. Because basically, I would have got the bomb for only a couple dollars with that set. All right, that's a cool deal. All right, folks, so I don't want to keep you cruising here too long with my nostalgic story there of childhood. So, if you like today's pipe tobacco by Red Leaf, and like said, this come in these little, nice little plastic containers there. This one is empty, but when they're full, oh, I almost dropped that. When they're full, they look like that, and the soap's inside. I have this one sitting on my cube dock, drying over there. And if you like today's shave, thumbs up. If you didn't like it, pshh. Say, Glenn, you stink, man. Get off it. Get off of YouTube. All right, so thank you to all my subscribers. We're getting up there. I think we're only like 20 away from the next giveaway, I think. But yeah, so please subscribe if you're not a subscriber. And thank all you guys. I love your comments. I never get any negative comments, which is crazy. So until next shave. Don't know what that's going to be just yet, but until next shave. Glenn signing off.